Sticking with the property sector, now Cape Town's uh, commercial office market is experiencing an uptick in occupancies driven by immigration trends and employees returning to offices. This has boosted Western Cape Focus property counter Spear Reed during the interim period. Vacancies improved, resulting in a 22% rise in total distributable income to 111 million rand. And joining me now to unpack the group's financial performance is company CEO Quinton Rossi. Thank you so much for your time, Quinton. Let's actually start off, I mean, just at the top, you achieved this performance uh, amid a tough uh, trading conditions. What are the headwinds that still stood out for you in this reporting period in the operating environment? Uh, good afternoon, Zanathi. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think the, the clear headwinds uh, we face are things like um, operating cost creep, uh, which have been clear and present uh, across the specifically across the office um, office components of the portfolio. Uh, we've had some severe weather conditions. We've seen uh, some ancillary effects of climate change coming through, uh, which have affected our repairs and maintenance um, provisions for the first half of the year. But we don't believe that to be structural. That will kind of um, come out in the wash uh, over the next. Uh, uh, six months. Mm. Uh, but together with that, we've had um, just the higher for longer interest rate cycle that, you know, we anticipated cuts to to be slightly deeper, given the fact that inflation really has been trending uh, downwards in the right direction. Mm. And those have been some of the, the kind of key, uh, key items. Uh, in addition to some nuances, like the um, city of Cape Town has a winter tariff and a summer tariff on electricity, uh, typically, the winter tariffs are more punitive than the summer tariffs, mm. and it always slightly impact the performance, financial performance for the first six months of the year. But then again, on a normalization basis, over 12 months, they tend to uh, to normalize out um, into positive territory as opposed to negative territory. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, it's really quite, um, yeah, it, it, this is something that's really starting to 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 uh, be apparent uh, at this point, so Quinton, that, I mean, with the climate change that we are seeing and the irregular uh, weather patterns that now companies may need to start setting aside capital for uh, building repairs and maintenance and all of that. Um, is that filtering through significantly to the business? Are, are there any provisions that you are making or uh, any kind of negotiations that you're having on the insurance front? So we, we provide very conservatively and prudently uh, for repairs and maintenance. Um, we only pay out 95% of our profits, um, so we retain 5%. In addition to, we don't add back amortization depreciation to our distribution pot. Um, so we have an additional buffer um, of provisions uh, for events like this where we have to intervene in mm -hmm. short notice without affecting the underlying cash flows of the portfolio. And I don't think the um, w w this is not a the climate situation isn't isn't uh, the same as what you find in the U in certain parts of the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I think our climate situation is slightly different. Mm. Uh, we just need to ensure that maybe we increase provisions okay. uh, for the first six months of of the next uh, financial period in the event um, that we face similar uh, environmental impacts. But uh, to that extent, we have not. Uh, insurance companies are a lot more focused on compliance related items relating to fire and okay. insurable interest loss, okay. um, as opposed to the environmental impact at this point in time. Ah, all right, I hear you on that. Uh, Quentin, you talk about the uh, rising tide uh, in tenant activity. Talk to me about this upside that you have seen and the drivers of it. Yeah, so I think, uh, in particular, in the Western Cape, uh, we've seen. Um, on a semi-migration perspective, we've got about 150,000 people per annum moving to the Western Cape to different parts, uh, concentrate, concentrated around the Cape Metro and the Southern Cape. Mm. And those typically are people that would be employed, um, that need an office, need an operational home from a business perspective. Uh, we've also seen large BPOs, uh, call centers, uh, placing uh, Cape Town at the top of, the, of their list when it comes to setting up a presence in South Africa. We've also seen with the growth of the fintech industry, uh, which currently has about 500 fintech companies operating mm -hmm. in Cape Town, employing about 40,000 people. All of those, all of those um, factors have boded very well for the uptake in the office, um, in the office sector. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that the Cape has never been a speculative office development market, as supply becomes more constrained, um, you start to see 
what every landlord really wants to see is, mm -hmm. is real rental growth, which is coming through quite nicely. And then ultimately it leads to feasible new developments coming to the market. Well, on what part of the recovery curve are your rental reversions uh, here, uh, Quinton? So we've delivered a, a core portfolio positive rental reversion of around five, uh, just over 5% mm -hmm. uh, for the period, um, which voted very well for, for the retail segment of the portfolio. Uh, we're still slightly negative in the office portfolio, okay. but we believe that to be transient. And in the industrial portfolio, we've pretty much um, evened out uh, moving into the positive rental reversion territory. Ah, all right. Uh, Quinton, there's still uh, quite a few questions that I want to ask you, uh, particularly on a strategy and also what you're most, most optimistic about on the GNU. But you and I will be having another conversation next week when you are here in Johannesburg. Thank you so much for your time and giving us insights on the numbers that we did see out of Spear today. That was the CEO of Spear, Reed, Quinton Rossi.